truly what hope is it? Against countless horrors that cannot be named, let alone fought by mortal means. Hey guys, so Gaming Boulevard got invited to check out Total War Warhammer on PC and we got an interview with Andy Hall, one of the developers of the game. So as you will hear in the audio, there was a lot of ventilation noises in the background so I re-recorded my questions, though the original answers from the developers stayed the same. I hope you enjoy it. The beasts that will devour the world. Hey guys, this is Gaming Boulevard, and I'm here with... Uh, my name's Andy Hall, I'm the lead writer on Total War Warhammer. Total War Warhammer is a combination of the Total War games and Warhammer, which are two totally different things. What are you doing to involve the, the Warhammer people? What are you doing to draw those people in? They, they are very different things, in that one's a physical tabletop hobby, and the other is a, a video game. Although there are some big uh, similarities as well. In fact, um, I think it's fair to say a lot of Total War fans were also Warhammer fans and vice versa. Uh, and also I think the, the merging of these two kind of iconic British brands uh, has developed a lot of interest. So, so players that probably weren't so much interested in you know, Total War Rome may be more interested in, in a Total War with goblins in, for instance. So yeah, so I, I, we think and we hope we're going to get loads of people want to want to see what a Total War with spells and giants looks like. So you are one of the writers of the Total War Warhammer game, and uh, there are four factions. Each of them have their own story, and there is quite a bit of story to go through. Uh, was it hard to keep things canon, and did the guys from Games Workshop give some input or, or say you can't do that? Uh, so, so Games Workshop owns the Warhammer brand, um, and they was excited at us uh, as as having a Total War version of Warhammer. Um, so there's been very much a kind of air of cooperation between the two. Yeah, so so they're co they're really happy with the results um, because the games are, are thematically so similar. Uh, you have these big epic battles. Um, with with this kind of overview of the campaign, um, effectively, this is the game I saw in my head when I was 11 years old and pushing miniatures across the tabletop. Um, what this does is allow those, those kind of static, stationary models to do stuff that I, in my head, was happening. They it's they really get to attack. Life. Uh, absolutely, um, and I think uh, for a lot of Warhammer fans, that's that's one of the reasons they're going to buy this game because it was seeing Cole, Cole Franz uh, on, on, on Deathclaw there moving around hearing him screech uh, seeing him charging we've really worked on the charges uh, for our real uh, for our battles um, so so like big heavy cavalry really punches through unlike any before and it, you know it looks like a movie mm. we're in a kind of era where um, the Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, these kind of big fantasy franchises that have these big epic battles, whether it's the end of the season of Game of Thrones, or in, and this game, whether you're a Warhammer fan or not, is kind of the ultimate epic battle simulator. So the Total War series has always been firmly rooted in reality, and now you suddenly have Warhammer, which has magic and all that stuff. It's The possibilities are endless. It's a giant toy box for you to mess around with. Was it overwhelming to have this entire toy box to play with? Probably for the player. Uh, uh, you know, um, we have flyers, like you say, and giants, uh, gigantic creatures, magic. So there is a lot of stuff to play with in, in, a, in a big battle. And, you know, for new players to go in with a 40-stack army against another 40-stack army, that's 
that's going to be full on. However, you know, we've designed the campaigns to be accessible, so, so we lead the players gently by the hand into, into this. Saying that, you know, if you're a Total War veteran, you're going to want to get into these cool, crazy stuff. That's why we have the custom battle mode and the quest battles right at the front menu, so you can get in and play and, you know, and experiment with all these cool new toys. From a making it point of view, yeah, there's been a big man hour investment, um, making sure that all this stuff is kind of animated correctly. Um, so in previous Total Wars we, we had like human rigs and cavalry rigs and maybe some elephants and camels. Yeah. In Total War Warhammer, let's take the orcs and goblins as an example, you have orc rigs, animation rigs, these are uh, orc rigs, goblin rigs, and then orcs ride boars, they, uh, so we need that rig. Uh, goblins ride spiders, they ride wolves. <laughs> yeah, um, pretty nuts. Giant spiders, you know, and so all this exponentially grows, and that's just one race. Uh, so as you can imagine, the, the time and investment we've made into this game is quite phenomenal. Um, and you also, you, you know, we're talking about some handcrafted animation here. You can't get the mocap studio, you, you can't get a griffin into a mocap studio because it doesn't exist. So our animators, you know, they've been scouring natural history films, you know, to see how eagles work and all that. So there's been a lot of kind of craft gone in and you know, these animators are from all over Europe and the world as well, you know, it's, there's been a lot of investment in this game. So we're, we're hoping that players, you know, come and play and appreciate it. Of course, with Warhammer, you get this endless possibility. There's a lot of new stuff. What are like some of the main new things in the game, some new mechanics and some new cool things to see? There's the obvious stuff to start with, uh, flying creatures. <laughs> Uh, and that doesn't just look cool, it has definite strategic impact. Uh, in a siege, for example, a flying creature can change the game from the gate. From the gate. Um, you know, because you can fly over those castle walls. But if you do so, you're unsupported. So it's not as easy as that sounds. Also, you know, we've got spells. We've never really done those before. Um, you can raise the dead, literally, out the ground. Again, a really cool kind of tactic for if in a siege you can raise the dead behind the castle walls. Um, yeah, oh, there's so much. Uh, we have all these different campaign mechanics I've been talking to, to you about earlier. Orcs with their fightiness meter, dwarfs with their book of grudges, uh, the Empire with their kind of excellent diplomacy, the undead able to raise the dead from battlefields that they, uh, they fought at before. All this kind of combines to make each race very unique. So if you assume a typical Total War campaign is probably about 100 hours, uh, and that's not even fighting all the battles, you get, that's also resolving a lot of those battles. Um, you, you've got 400 hours here, yeah, that's, <laughs> which that's is a beefy. lot. That's a beefy campaign. That's that is beefy, yeah. Campaigns. Um, and every race that we add to it will probably add the same amount of content. Yeah. And, what are the future plans for the Total War Warhammer game? Are there going to be expansions, new campaigns, new characters? What's uh, the future for this game? Yes, absolutely. So we're starting with four factions, and Chaos is a, a early adopter bonus because you can get it free for the first week. Uh, but we've also got another whole race that's going to be a free, free add-on later on. Um, we've got lots of free content planned as well, new characters, new spell laws as well. Um, and also, you know, we've got new campaigns planned for different armies, kind of mini campaigns, uh, as well as big kind of grand campaign entrances. Um, at the end of the day, there are 16 races in Warhammer and that's only four of them. So, you know, there's a free, free four or five year plan here going on here and this is just the first total war fans are gonna have they're just not gonna have any social life left. <laughs> no uh, okay. what, what's here isn't a computer game it's a hobby <laughs> this is a new hobby for people okay so that about wraps it up um, is there gonna be mod support for the game yes yeah we, we announced mod support just last week actually um, and so we have uh, total war games have always been well supported with modders uh, through the steam workshop and that's that is now the case, and with Warhammer as well. Games Workshop have been very generous with us in that respect. They've never really allowed modding before, uh, but they have such a confidence in the product that we, they are allowing us to mod. And you know, they, those guys, they're again, they're kind of 
adding alterations to the campaign. Uh, we've got two that's going to be out the gate, and again, adding more variety, more hours to the more, more content. More, 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 more. Yeah, thanks for uh, taking some time out of your busy schedule and talking to me about uh, this dope-ass game. Thank you.